few miles, and hello, everybody. I'm really, really excited to be here. Uh, my name is Anshu. I'm Shiraz. And we are, as Miles mentioned, the co-founders of The Chalk Co. We make fresh and fun snacks inspired by the healthy and flavorful ingredients of Indian street snacks. But Shiraz, what's chaat? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> this is chaat. Uh, what you're looking at are pictures of Indian street snacks. And while a lot of us in this room are extremely comfortable or think we're pretty comfortable with Indian food, I'm willing to bet that most of us think of the same things. These very rich sort of curries, big roasted meats, breads, rice, really delicious food. Don't get me wrong, I mean, we're both Indian, we grew up on that stuff, but that's not all of Indian cuisine. And there's this great category of snacks called chaat that are not only very, very dynamic and vibrant in terms of taste, texture, and temperature, but they're also built on some of the most on-trend ingredients in the natural food space here in the United States. So things like yogurt, which we're very keen on, but also, also spices like turmeric, chilies, different tropical fruits, nuts, pulses, legumes, really, really on-trend stuff, a great palate to work with. We could do something with this. Shiraz, that sounds delicious. What oh are we going to do with it? It is delicious. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. We make a savory yogurt snack. All right? It's, it's a snack. It's, it's uh, three flavors on the market at the moment. We've got cucumber mint, mango chili, and tamarind date. These are very different from typical yogurt, mainly in the fact that they do not contain any added sugar. Instead, they've got spices. Instead of just fruits, there's fruits and vegetables. It's grass-fed whole milk yogurt. And we've got a topping of puffed, crunchy lentils. Uh, so there's a lot of really great ingredients here, a lot of very simple uh, ingredients here, a lot of great flavor. I just don't know. Is there, I hope there's a market for this. I, I think there is, Shiraz. Oh, thank you. Good. So the market opportunity. So let's look at snacking in the American market. It's a large $70 billion opportunity. And it's continuing to increase, right, because Americans are snacking more frequently than ever. You have more than half of today's consumers saying that they snack at least twice a day. And you're also seeing uh, many of those consumers, almost half, replace one or two of their daily meals. Most of that snacking is happening in the mid-afternoon, which is the ideal time for the snack that Shiraz talked about that we're launching. Let's drill down a little bit deeper. The yogurt market. It's an $8 billion market that has continued to grow over the last five, six years. Uh, it is one of the fastest moving categories in the grocery store. So you get a product in that set, and it's a really high velocity category. However, as you all know, it is mostly a sweet product, right? Top selling flavors, strawberry, blueberry, et cetera. And it's mostly for breakfast. So we've launched a product that's in a large category, in a high velocity category, and what we think is highly differentiated. However, it's all about execution. As, uh, as Miles told you, we've been, we've been very busy, and not just over the last few weeks or months, but actually over the last almost two years. Uh, and that's been uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of work to acquire great ingredient suppliers, producers of packaging, and also partners in actual production. And we've been really fortunate to find these partners that were not only willing to work with us at an early stage because they believed in us and they believed in the idea, but that also have the incredible ability to scale over time as we grow over the next several years. This is and us. scale is going to be really, really critical because we are now live, right? So as of January, we launched, we're in about 50 retailers, including 25 Whole Foods. I know there's a bunch of uh, people from Whole Foods. Thank you for the early support. Uh, but we, we are live you. in key urban markets, New York City, Philly, Baltimore, and D.C. We're seeing reorders come in, which is always a great early sign of a, of a new product to, to market. And we're seeing a wide variety of people actually like the product. You've got urban professionals, you've got suburban moms, and even kids. So we're really, really excited about this, this early traction. And finally, we want to talk a little bit about a team. We've talked about the product, the market, the opportunity, and our early execution success. But, you know, a startup is hard, and you've got to have a really, really dynamic team to help grow a startup. My background is in startup technology, technology startups, sorry. 
helping build a wide variety of businesses. Shiraz shares a very different background than I do. I'm from the world of fine dining, be it operations, management, recipe and menu development, wine, food, all my life. We brought on board uh, Sushma, who is in PR and marketing, has worked with brands from Chobani to Blue Apron and has really led those into, into growing uh, bustling companies. Yeah, and we've got Bob Burke. I know we're almost out of time here, but Bob Burke, who's a legend in the natural food space, was an exec at Stonyfield Farm and now uh, is on the board of several food startups. Great advice from these people. We've raised about half a million bucks in seed round capital. Uh, and if anyone in the crowd is interested in getting involved, let's, let's chat. chat. Recently, Chiobani uh, has introduced now the savory line with some of the similar profiles to what you're offering. How do you expect to deal with that? Uh, Ch yeah, so uh, Chobani and, and a lot of other big players in the yogurt category, I think, have recognized that there is a real backlash and a concern with the <coughs> sugar consumption, particularly in this country. Um, what Chobani has, has started doing uh, is, is adding these really sort of exotic flavors, adding these degrees of spice to their products, and it's really exciting, and, and for us, it's actually great to see those flavors take hold from even a mainstream uh, producer or company. Um, but what we're really doing is, is targeting a different world, and, and it's not the world of necessarily the sweet breakfast yogurt, whether it has spice in it or not. We're really going after this category of snacking, where you're eating something that's got, it, that's intentionally not sweet, that's part of a lunch, that's part of an afternoon snack. And we're, we're really going in a different direction. And, and maybe if we're doing well, uh, we'll see other brands move in that direction, but we're not making a dip. We're not making a sweet yogurt with spices. We're making a savory snack. Yeah, and I would, I would add to that, that the, I know you're mentioning the flip uh, product that Chobani came out with. We've tried it. It's still a very sweet added sugar yogurt that happens to have some interesting toppings, right? So it's still at its base a sweet breakfast yogurt with maybe some slight savory uh, toppings to it. It's an interesting area. Uh, Chobani, obviously a very large business and one of the fastest growing, uh, but they, they're not doing a pure savory product, right? And the flavor profile that, that we're going to be looking at is obviously inspired by uh, what we think are fantastic flavor profiles that Chobani necessarily may not have uh, in its palate because it's just not on their brand necessarily as well. Hi guys, great presentation. That was awesome. Um, Thank you. Can you give us a flavor for the consumer acceptance of a savory yogurt? In particular, children who are so used to eating sweet yogurts, how are they reacting to this product? So I, I think... And this is really, really fresh data, right? So we just launched, we've done a number of consumer surveys through the course of our two-year product development, really helped us sort of adjust the formulas and the taste. But, you know, Shiraz, uh, myself, and uh, a marketing manager, our first full-time hire, um, we did a bunch of demos uh, throughout New York City independent stores, as well as more recently in Whole Foods as we got product on shelf there. And uh, we were actually very surprised by the consumer acceptance. Um, a lot of people are trying to cut sugar out of their diet. We're standing in front of a category, a wall of yogurt, that is almost all of them have added sugar. And so people are very, very receptive to it. Uh, moms come up to us when we're doing demos. They say, hey, kids, try this. And kids actually like it, right? More, more than we thought. It wasn't more necessarily a target, but... Uh, it's really great. The three flavors that we have at the moment are all extremely different, and that's that's one because they're tasty that way, but also because they they each attract, in some cases, a different type of consumer. Um, but for example, a fruit like uh, one of our flavors, which is tamarind and date, it has a natural sweetness to it, um, and milk has a natural sweetness to it. So you can still entice people who are who are leery of giving up or weary of giving up that sweet factor in their yogurt, you can still get them to come on board to a savory flavor by, by sort of bridging that gap. And, and going back to your question, channel strategy is gonna be really, really critical as well, right? So we've talked predominantly, predominantly about uh, natural grocery chains, right? Another big part of our strategy is to look at fast casual restaurants where consumers are already in that savory mindset. So think about Midtown Manhattan. There's dozens of well-branded, fast casual places where you want to go in, grab a sandwich and salad, be, be in and out. 
this is a great opportunity for us to add a product that adds to the bill of the average consumer walking into one of those retail locations as they grab a sandwich. Hey, great, I want a mango chili yogurt with this turkey sandwich that I'm going to buy. So that's an important part of our strategy as well. Um, can you talk about the price point, how it compares to other yogurts and other snack foods, and also the margins? Uh, Sure. Yeah, I could talk about it. Yeah, sure. Uh, so our price point, uh, it depends on the, the channel. In New York City, we're right around two ninety nine. In When we talk about our Whole Foods rollout, we're uh, a little less than that. We're about $2.50. So it's definitely higher than uh, your breakfast yogurts. In some cases, you can get them now for $1. You can get 10 for 10 Fire, 10 for 10 Shabani. Uh, we're not necessarily competing with that, right? We're competing for your afternoon or as a mini meal snack, right? And in that price point, we're actually, I would say, one of the cheaper price products uh, for your afternoon grab-and-go snacks. You want to talk about margin as well? She asked about margin. Oh, margins. Margins. Um, uh, well, our margins initially in the first year will be right around 40%. We'll look to improve that over time. All right, we're out of time. The chat code. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone.